Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Building Subtext. Today, I want to talk about gender and narrative theory, which is something that I knew I would eventually put into subtext. But because of all the additions with the AI that I added in April, it was something that I had to push up in the schedule because some of the stuff that was coming back was not gelling with the names of the players, and I had to add a whole bunch of stuff. So I wanted to show what that was all about and then also talk about how it relates to narrative theory. So here I just have a sample story. It's that Williams Way story that I was working on, the old outlaw that was robbing stagecoaches. What I've done now, forgive this, it's ugly, but it's functional. Here on the right, you'll see these are all the different through lines, objective story, main character, influence character, and relationship story. Right now I'm just gonna use the main character here, William. And you'll see I've added gender identity here, male, female, and then this is non-binary. And there's a reason why it's Z instead of X or instead of N. Maybe I should get into that first. When it comes to sex and gender and narrative theory, there is actually a quad of these two that can better explain what is going on and what we're looking at when it comes to the players in subtext. Here we have a typical dramatic quad and we have two axes. We have sex here from upper left to lower right and then gender from upper right to lower left. You'll notice that sex here is aligned across the fixed axis. In every dramatic quad, when you look at four concepts like this, the items that are going upper left to lower right are fixed in nature. And then the ones that go from lower left to upper right are more fluid. That's how they, the two of them balance each other. This axis is fluid. This axis is static. In the upper left, we have physical sex. That's what you're born with, all the parts. It's something that's very static. Now, you can change it. There are different techniques that you can go through, like surgery, to change your physical sex. It doesn't mean that it can't be changed. It's just that once changed, it's static once again. Down here in the bottom is what is known in dramatic theory as mental sex. And it has a huge impact on the structure of a narrative, such that when you choose male or female determines whether the narrative is given towards cause and effect in problem solving, which would be male mental sex, or given more to relationships and justification, which would be female mental sex. This also is fixed and it's not something that can be changed. It can be lessened and the impact of it can be dampened down through pharmacology, through different drugs, where you can essentially block out or lower the impact of the filter. This is essentially the filter of the mind, and it exists at the boot record of the mind. Before you've even had a chance to think about anything, this is what colors everything else, and that's what is actually being modeled in a dramatic story form. Currently, you can't change this to the extent that you could do in the physical but you can numb it down if that is something that you're looking for. The other axis is the gender axis, which is where most people confuse mental sex. And I'll explain what that's all about here. So in the upper right, we have gender identity. And then in the lower left, we have gender preference. Gender identity are all the pronouns. So he, her, he, him, she, her, they, them. That is the identification of gender whether male or female or a mix. So you can see this is why you have fluid or you have somebody who refers to themselves as gender fluid. They don't generally tend to refer to themselves as sex fluid. And then down here in the left is the one where a lot of people get caught up and that's gender preference. Yes, it is the preference for whether you're driven towards male or female, but not only external, but also if you're driven towards a preference for a way of thinking. When we look at the lower left here, this here is psychology and this is desire. So this is what is pulling somebody towards uh, feeling as if they want something or they're lacking something. And that is what drives preference. Identity is more ability, whether or not you are capable of doing certain things and what is the gender capability that you have assigned to that, you can see how these are fluid. You can bounce back and forth, and it's hard to tell where one starts and where one ends. With the sex, it's really clear. 
this is all the external, <laughs> the physical sex here is all external. Here in the mental sex, it's all internal. The difference is night and day. Whereas this is more of a fluidity. What I found in teaching Germanic theory and working practically with all kinds of different writers is that a lot of people are pulled towards the Germanic theory of story because they appreciate the fact that it doesn't work in absolutes. Even the concept of a male mental sex story or a female mental sex story is really stimulating and exciting to people who think in more complex terms and who aren't so black and white in absolute. It doesn't hurt that the Dramatica theory of story was both created by one person who's transgender and another person who is gay. Their gender identity, gender preference, and their mental sex had a huge impact on the creation of Dramatica. In fact, and I'll leave a link to it down below, it was absolutely essential in the creation of dramatic theory. When somebody discovers dramatic and they discover this concept of mental sex and they get excited and they're drawn towards this idea of holistic thinking over linear thinking, then they assume that they are female mental sex. Obviously there's nothing wrong with it. You can think whatever you want. Everybody is free to think in any way, shape or form that they want to think in. They can write about anything that they want to write about. But what's going to happen is when they set the narrative to female mental sex, they're going to get a structure that is completely different than a male mental sex story. And they won't have the same intuitive inherent understanding of what's going on to be able to actually fully embrace and engage in that narrative. What's happening is that with their gender preference, they're drawn towards that excitement of thinking holistically and somehow that's more complex and more sophisticated than linear, they're getting confused where they would be better served by thinking of this structurally and just setting it to male mental sex. And then in the storytelling, which is the fluidity here, doing whatever it is that they can to explore all these different concepts, both holistically and linearly. And that's why in the last five or six years, I had geared subtext towards holistic and linear because you don't want people to think that somehow you're being misogynistic or sexist. And now it's just come to a time where, you know, let's get back to the basics of dramatic theory and get back to the core concepts of what it is that actually created the whole thing and find a way to explain it and put it into subtext so that it works across all stories. The reason for all this is because the artificial intelligence that I put into subtext gets a little bit confused itself because it's equating gender identity with physical sex. Meaning if it sees the name John, it might automatically assume that it's John the male when perhaps what you meant was John the female, or maybe you actually meant John as non-binary. And then that created all kinds of problems and you'd have to change the storytelling. You can understand if the language models are based on the entire history of writing, then you can see how it's basing it on what was accepted and what was culturally okay, instead of what was really happening. It's just repeating what's actually been done. And so you're getting confirmation bias and perhaps not having as much sophistication as you possibly could. And that's because these are companion pairs. This is where you would see male is male and female is female. Yeah, they work together. There's no difference when there is a fluidity between the two. Practically speaking, how that works here in the storytelling in subtext is you can choose male, female, or non-binary. And I've chosen Z as a means of getting this, this idea of that physical sex and then the Z pattern here, because there is that fluidity. The other thing I should say is the reason why there is this confusion where many confuse holistic and linear thought with female mental sex and male mental is because male mental sex, their blind spot is the fact that they blend this axis, that they combined ability and desire. And that's where their blind spot is. Gender fluid gets very confusing for them and distinguishing between that and mental sex. That's where that misunderstanding is coming from. Here you can choose. Now, if you haven't decided yet, if you're using an older story, then it's going to go off of history. It's going to go off thousands and thousands of years of the written word and decide William is 99% chance male. So I'm going to leave it set to that, or you can specifically choose it here and he's the main character. So what I'm going to do is pop into the through lines here 
And this was the original idea, the fact that he was too old to be an outlaw. I'm getting too old for this kind of thing. While I have an idea of the subtext of what's actually going on in this story underneath for his through life, I can always reach out after a couple of weeks and I want to see maybe I can get a better idea of what's going on. All right, we're back. There was a little something I had to fix and everything seems to be working fine. So let me continue on with this. I just spun the AI just to make sure it was all working right before I started recording again. Here you can see this is William set to male. So William was born in the late 1800s to a family of outlaws when he was just a boy. His family was killed in a gunfight with the laws. He was raised by grandparents. He's the last of his line. Very male oriented, which is great. If I wanted to, I could just grab that, save it to my story, and then it would be down here at the bottom and I could use it later on. Actually, I might use that because that's cool. So let's go back to players here. And now let's make, I'm not going to change his name. It's William, and now it's her name. So her name is William, and now I switched it to female. So let's switch back to main character here and run it again and see what we get. So now William is identifying female, and let's see what storytelling comes back. Here we go. William was in her early 20s. The family was caught and hanged, leaving William alone. Let's see if there's one that's a little more specific. William was once the leader of a successful outlaw gang, but now in her early 40s, she's starting to feel her age. The other members of her gang are also starting to get. And the really interesting thing about this is I originally wrote this thinking male, and now this actually sounds way more interesting to me. I'm not changing it to a female mental sex story. The structure is going to be exactly the same, but now I actually like this because this is really interesting to think of her identifying female in her early 40s. So I'm just going to actually say that. And then I can use that later on in the rest of the story. Do you see how the greatest thing about this is it gives all kinds of new storytelling ideas that I wouldn't have even thought of. I see that William was an outlaw in her younger days and now at the age of 43, she's finding it more and more difficult to keep up with the younger outlaws. If you're seeing anything on my face or if you can read my expression, I'm just thinking of how cool it would be to <laughs> tell this story. And then finally, let's switch back. And now let's make William non-binary. So it has that Z pattern, that flow. And let's go back to the same exact story point. This is the general area of conflict for William if identifying as non-binary. Let's see what it comes back with. It's going out and getting all kinds of cool ideas. And now also telling a story about being too old to be an outlaw. But now you'll see it's all somebody who refers to himself as non-binary. William was born in a small town in middle nowhere and never felt like they belonged. When William was 16, they left home to drive group of bandits. So it's almost the same storytelling, but instantly you get that different feel to it. Now, William is a respected member of the community, but they can't help but feel a little bit nostalgic. Grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. William was just a teenager. They started running with a rough crowd. With the help of Sarah, William escaped from prison. Different kind of storyline here. They feel like they're too old. After a life of being on the run, committing crimes, William decides to finally give up a life of peace or live a life of peace. William moves to a small town gets a job as a barista and starts going to therapy. I had imagined this in the 1800s, but maybe that could be something that I can work on. And this one's really nice. After a life of robbing banks and stagecoaches, William decides to give it all up and go live in the country with their horse. William spends their days riding and exploring the countryside and they are content. It's a completely different story again, but given towards that non-binary identity for William, then you have a completely different story. So I'm really excited by how quickly I was able to integrate this. I'm going to make this look way better so that it's a lot more attractive to deal with, but I'm really excited about just being able to make this available because I know it's a concern to a lot of writers and to a lot of artists, and I want them to be able to have the very best tools to be able to express themselves the way that they feel best. So that's it for this episode of building subtext. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And I'll see you next time.